Hey y'all, happy Sunday. This is AL Thick and Dumb. I'm coming at y'all with a hopefully short video on basically my thoughts about the mini documentary that was released about Nivea. And for those of y'all who do not know Nivea, Nivea is someone who was out in the music industry like over 10, 15 years ago. And she was everything. I want to put out a disclaimer right now because some of the things that I'm going to say might come off as hating or misunderstood in some type of way, even though it actually would just be uh, what my observation at the time was of certain things. So anyway, let me jump right on into this video. So, interview came on and... You know, she was describing how the music industry was back then, and she was, like, really young, and she looked young. I remember when I first saw her, I always lived for her, and I heard her on the radio. And keep in mind, y'all, we didn't have cable, satellite dish, or any of that. So whenever I got a chance to see her on somebody's cable TV, I would watch the videos, and when she was hot, she was up there on those lists, and I was able to see her. And so I was so excited. Like, Nivea has always been gorgeous to me in saying all that. So anyway, back in the day, apparently they didn't feel as though she was urban at all or enough to the point of where she apparently wasn't really being uh, shopped around and marketed in the way that she should have been in order for people to want to play her music on the radio stations that basically cater to black listeners. So, I mean, I didn't, I don't feel as though I had that problem where I lived and I lived in Montgomery, Alabama. And I used to hear her music all the time. <clears throat> and they used to spin videos that had her in them, whether she was a feature or the actual person who the song was, you know, actually for the person who actually was the singer. So, I i mean, I was confused when she mentioned that, you know, people weren't really feeling her like that and would look at her sideways because she would wear color hair back in the time that she was out. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know. But she said that people would just kind of look at her crazy because I guess when she did it, it was a little bit earlier than when everybody like nowadays are trying to do it. So they looked at her crazy like, yeah, no. So they would basically dub her as the black Britney Spears. And, you know, they felt like she was more on the pop side. And I don't know. I didn't really get that vibe most of the time when I would listen to her music. So I was confused about that. Oh, Lord, y'all. So, she gets to talking, and apparently the first manager she had was Raggedy. Um, <laughs> uh, even though she did get on because of them, this person, like, didn't graduate school at all. Like, they had a ninth grade education. She graduated high school and all that, but, you know, this person was getting over on, I mean, on a, a, a level that is like, it's like, wait a minute, you did the most, sir. So apparently at one point in time, she was like through Jive Records. She was signed to them. And that guy who was her manager, he would lie and say that she wrote, it was some like hit song that she sung. And they, he tried to say that she actually wrote the song. And she was actually able to get a $1 million deal behind all that even though she was 18 years old. And so she was like, look, I'm going to take what I can get or whatever because I got to get out of the situation that I'm in. So the way she was living, she grew up in a place where they did not have indoor plumbing, meaning no bathroom. So everybody was using the bathroom, you know, number one and number two in a pot. And yeah, that's not cool at all. Like, that is very crazy to me. Like, that had me open my eyes like this. Like, what? So, she was just like, look, I'm going to take what I can get. I got to get out of here. I can't live like this no more. So, 
At one point in time, when Mystical had that song, um, Danger, apparently, what's her name, was supposed to do it. Khalees was supposed to be the one who did the hook that she ended up on. And for some reason, that didn't work out. So they were like, well, throw the, no, throw the new girl on there. And so that's what she did. And she ended up touring with Mystical. So she was talking about one instance where she came on the stage. And I guess she did performances and stuff like before him actually coming out. And, they, and she would get booed. People would throw all kinds of stuff at her. And she said like 30 minutes later, she would come out with him. And everybody would be like, yeah, setting it off or whatever. And they'd be like, wait a minute, that was that same girl that was just out there. What? <laughs> I'm like, that is crazy. How y'all hate her? And she's basically sounding the exact same. <laughs> Except she's basically performing with somebody else and now y'all here for it. Like, that's crazy. So, I thought that was so crazy. So, uh, eventually things ended with that management situation and she ended up she actually was a writer she just didn't write that song so she started developing her writing skills and um in the midst of all that i think when she was with the first manager um she had music out and Lil wayne heard of her and he reached out and you know told some people like look i want to work with her so they ended up meeting up. Come to find out, he was like, yeah, I ain't trying to work with you. I'm trying to get your number. So, like, the whole time while this interview, this particular interview, like, currently right now is happening, and she's discussing what happened back then, she's kind of gushing and, you know, the way she's reminiscing about how everything happened with how Lil Wayne rolled up on her. And, you know, she was making it seem like he was all, you know, charming and, all that and you know they became an item and he actually proposed to her and she was like well something that a lot of people don't know is that I was wearing the engagement ring that he gave me in the laundromat video and so they ended up paying it over to that video and I was like what it was a big old rock too like y'all it was I was just like what so anyway for some reason, they didn't work out, and the dream came along, and he was basically trying to manage her, and uh, he was helping her write, and, you know, things started out innocently, and she said they basically began, became partners in life, and came out with all this good music, and, you know, everything seemed fine, and... uh before that happened, actually, what I thought was interesting was she was so in, in, deep in her feelings about Lil Wayne that she mentioned um, writing her next project. And it was basically her venting her frustrations about, you know, how things ended with him and how, you know, everything was just about him. That's what the music was that she was writing about. So I guess it was angry. I haven't heard her stuff, like the other things that haven't been played on the radio. I haven't heard those things in a while. So I am going to go back and listen to them. I have listened to some of them. But yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, like I said, she met the dream and they started working together and they got married and things popped for her. She did uh, Laundromat and she did um, OK, which was a hit and Oh, I mean, I lived for her back in the day. Like, she was everything. She was so pretty to me. And I was just like, wow. Like, she seemed so innocent. But at the same time, she seemed like she could handle her own. So, apparently, that's what Lil Wayne saw in her. He thought that she was sassy. And he wanted to know who she was and wanted to know what her number was. And that, that's apparently what people see in her. And in a good way and in a bad way. So... When uh, at one point in time she uh, we hadn't we hadn't heard from her anymore, and I'm I'm that type of person where if I really like someone, I haven't heard any music from them in a while. I'm like, okay, well, where are they at? Where where did they go? Because they was just you know popping not too long ago. So where are they? And I was one of those people wondering where Nibia was. Well, apparently she had gotten pregnant with her first child and like, I think it was 2005. It was like the same year one of her songs got released or came out or whatever. 
Then a year later, after that, she got pregnant with twins. So she had three kids to take care of, and things fizzled out with the dream. And so she ended up, you know, basically being a single mother. And um, one of the things that I found to be very disheartening is that when she had the kids, they tried to make it seem like, you know, if you're going to pursue your dream of singing, you're going to have to put the kids in boarding schools and leave them with nannies, nannies and she didn't want any of that. And um, this is one of the things that a lot of people might think I'm being shady about when I say what I'm going to say or thinking I'm being malicious or whatever, which I'm not. So... In all actuality, the first time I ever heard of her having any kind of ties to Lil Wayne is when she got pregnant for him and had her last child. So I was confused. So since I hadn't heard from her in a long time, I'm like, please tell me that she is not dealing with him in order to get her career back popping. Like, no, please don't let this be the situation. And she just sat up here and got pregnant for him. Like, I, that's exactly how I felt. But, again, like I said, I didn't know what their history was before. I didn't know they knew each other and had dealings, at least, especially to the point where he proposed to her. So, I found that to be interesting, too. So, turned out, like, she really, like, for real lived for Lil Wayne for some reason. I don't know what people see in him, but they be living for him. <laughs> I just be like, Lord, what do y'all see? So... She said that when she was with Lil Wayne, she felt that she could be creative because he was creative and how he worked and they would be able to work together and all this other stuff. But, you know, whatever. As we see, that didn't work out. So she just said that she did appreciate the fact that they allowed, well, not they allowed, I, I just found it to be interesting that they, it seemed like, it, the way that she said it, she made it seem like the both of them were like, look, you're going to have to put her in boarding school where they're going to be with nannies. And she was just like, no, I love my kids very much. I would never do that to them. I'm a great mother and I'm willing to sacrifice my career for my kids. I want to raise my kids. And she talked about how, you know, since her kids still are um, pretty young, even when she was with the two of them back in the day when the kids were a whole lot younger, when they became of school age, you know how it goes. You got to go to these student parent conferences and all this other stuff. She was like, you know, even though she is not, you know, just a normal person, she basically had to become this normal person and stand in, stand in for both of them because they were so, they had so much celebrity behind them. They had so much celebrity with them to the point where it was like, okay, I got to do what I got to do for my kids. And, you know, they can't show up. She said, Lil Wayne and Dream cannot show up to no parent-teacher conference and all this other stuff. I kind of feel like, yeah, they can't. <laughs> but, I mean, I understand what she's saying. But yeah, she she sacrificed a whole lot. And, you know, I heard that she'd done, I think, cocaine or something. And I hate that. I hate that she got into drugs. She probably did it because she was so depressed and was... The only thing that she was receiving from them was the child support, which a lot of people were like, well, what's wrong with getting the child support, all that money they make? Because y'all know, y'all know back in the day how many songs the Dream was putting out by himself that was hit after hit after hit. And Lil Wayne's still making money hand over fist. So, I mean, pretty sure she was taken care of exceptionally well financially as far as being able to take care of the kids. But the way she said it, I'm thinking that she's trying to say that. Well, I don't know. Because it's like she said that they were great fathers, too. And she had, like, pictures with them all being together or, and you know, whatever. So, I don't understand. I don't understand what she really really meant when it came to that because they apparently they were I'm guessing the only thing I can really think of maybe she was saying they weren't willing to help her when it came to her career like getting her career back off the ground because I mean, I don't know I don't know that's what I'm I'm guessing it had to be about because it's ridiculous why would you not help her like she was 
she's so old. Like, oh, well, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, to me, I thought she did well over here, but from when she did this interview, she was saying that she would sell out overseas and she would travel overseas and really do well overseas. Like, she would do well in other countries and come back here and they won't even play her. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't even play her music like that in most areas. And I just, I was just like, what? Like, that made no sense to me. So I just feel like she's one of those people that she was, I guess, dealt a bit a bad hand, so to speak. I don't know. And, you know, it, it made me really sad. Like, I actually shed a tear to, at, like, two points in this video that um, they did for the documentary where she was saying that, you know, she loves her kids and she sacrificed for her kids. And, like, she started really crying and she was just like, Y'all, I just can't. It was it was a lot. She got to crying. She was just like, maybe it wasn't my time. And she was saying that she didn't understand how other people were basically like basically like her. Like she mentioned Erica Badu and she mentioned Khalees. And she was saying she could she saw how they were able to break down the barriers and people would look at them like they were, you know, out of the box and kinda perceived as being weird and how they do their music, but they were able to break through. And so she just started questioning herself, wondering, like, what is it about me that I'm not able to break through? Especially, like, over here in the States. Like, everybody, I guess, like, um, like Bridget Kelly. I don't know how true it is, but she was saying that she does exceptionally well overseas in, you know, in, uh, in London and all these other places or whatever. And I don't know. I don't really hear anything about her here even when she was popping a little bit like way back in the day i very rarely heard anything about her but she does well anywhere that's not in the united states i never understood that so she was like she had so many moments where she was just crying and she was like maybe it wasn't my time i don't know what it is and i was just like lord so after all the crying and stuff <laughs> She eventually mentioned that she had a project that was coming out and it was going to be something akin to the Speaker Box and the Love Below um, album that came out, which was amazing. But it's just going to be her. It's not going to be two artists. It's going to be her. One side is going to be the hip hop and R&B side where she's going to reveal everything that happened in life to her, like a whole lot of apparently like juicy stuff, good, bad, ugly, all that in between. And the other side is going to be the acoustic side where she references, what's his name? Was it uh, Randy Watson, Sexual Chocolate? She said that's kind of how that's going to be, how his personality is. That's how it's going to be on the album. And she described what... The video, uh, well, I'm sorry, what the visual uh, artwork would look like on it. And she said it was going to be her face. And it's like one side was going to be her made up and done up and all that with the weave and all that stuff. And the other side was going to be her with no makeup on and her natural hair or whatever. And I'm very interested. And, um, I meant to watch a video. I don't know if it actually was a full-on video or if it was just um, me being able to listen to audio, but of a song called Circles that um, is supposed to be out that's on this album. So hopefully it's good. I don't feel like she's going to disappoint, but I don't know because of the drug use. You know how some people, like Bobby Brown to me don't sound, he sounds terrible. But I I feel like she is going to still sound decent, still sound good. I'm rooting for her, and even though she's in her 30s, I don't feel like it's too late for her. So hopefully this time around she'll be able to go far. And oh gosh, y'all, one of the things that she mentioned, oh my gosh, I was like, she mentioned something about how at one point in time in her career, they were basically um, marketing Sierra. And because Sierra would be like, you know that song, My Goodies or Goodies or whatever it is. And 
they were able to mar- market her for that song, and she said that she she said that they didn't know how to market her for any kind of music like that because it's like how can you market somebody who looks like her? Meaning she has all these tattoos, she has really sassy type of personality. But Sierra seemed like wholesome and all that stuff or whatever. And even though she was dancing the way that she would dance, but she'd be like, no, you can't have my goodies. And I guess like if you were to look at her um, and have her tattoos and stuff exposed, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be believable, I guess, that she's, that she's the type of person you'd be like, oh, my goodies, my goodies, you can't have my goodies and all this other stuff. You know, singing any of the songs that are like that. I guess that they really didn't feel like they would be able to market to anybody and say, okay, this is believable. We could sell this to somebody. So I just feel really bad that her life has gone down this road as far as the music side is concerned. And she she literally said out of her own mouth that the record execs or whoever said to her that people don't want to have sex with her. So it's kind of like the different conspiracy things and other things that I've been hearing about for years upon years that if you are open to allowing all of your orifices to be, you know, penetrated and you have that certain look, then you'll go far in the music industry and even in Hollywood itself with just acting. And she said that she was not here for none of that type of stuff anyway. And they just straight up told her that you're not effable. And I'm just like, who says that to somebody? What? Like, y'all, I cannot. Like, a lot of the times, some of the things that I saw for myself, I'm kind of glad it didn't work out because I think that I would have gotten caught up in some of the stupidity and I would have had to call some people out on some stuff and then watch my back after the fact because I'm not here for that stupid stuff. So, Nivea, I wish you the best. Your children are beautiful. You are gorgeous. Only thing, I mean, that really changed about Nivea was that she got thicker. Like, she had the kids. And I saw her when she was pregnant with um, Lil Wayne's baby. She was thicker. And all that. And a lot of people have mentioned about her jaw because they said that with certain drugs, when you do certain drugs, your jaw does something and it's hindering the way that she's speaking. I don't know. But anyway, I feel like if she still has her voice, God has still allowed her to keep her voice. Hopefully she'll be able to do what she needs to do. And I thought it was beautiful that her daughter told her recently that she is an inspiration. And she said that that touched her because that's all she's always wanted to do was be an inspiration to at least one person. And her daughter is at least that one person who feels as though she's an inspiration show. So I wish you the best. I hope everything works out well. I really, really hope that everything works out well for Nivea. Nivea deserves this. So anyway, y'all. Go on ahead and watch that video if you've never seen it. I enjoyed it. It's just 15 minutes, like right under 15 minutes. Um, I got the notification from the BET network thing, and it was up there. And I waited a day or two because I didn't know if I wanted to hear what was going to be said as far as if it was going to be something that was going to disturb my spirit and make me just roll my eyes and be upset. But I went on ahead and bit the bullet, and I watched it. And I'm glad. I actually watched it twice. So I'm happy for Nivea. I'm glad that she has new music coming out. And hopefully everything goes well. So anyway, I'll see y'all on the next video. Bye.